For many of us, our largest investment is our home, followed closely behind by our retirement accounts, which for many of us is our 401k, our 403b, or 457, or other employer-sponsored retirement accounts. Accounts where our employers give us a match, typically for, for some of the money that we put in, and then give us investment offerings uh, beyond that. And so in today's video, I'm gonna share with you uh, some of the key numbers, you know, what is the average American balance in a 401k? Um, and just give you some numbers that I think you'll find interesting regarding our largest investment uh, accounts. So let's start off with, you know, how much can you contribute to your 401k? Your 401k in 2023, uh, the limit on that is $22,500. Uh, and that's up $500 from 2022. Uh, and if you're over 50 years old, you can uh, add an additional $7,500. So in total, you know, that's $30,000 a year that we can add. And, and, and that's a lot of money. So it can be a really powerful investment tool for us. Uh, and let's find out more about these uh, 401ks and, and what people are doing and how they're using it and how their average balance is. So let's go for a walk uh, and, and talk about 401ks. Okay, so how many people uh, actually take advantage of their 401ks. It's actually pretty high. Uh, Three-fourths of Americans participate in our 401k if we're offered one, and I think that's great. I think that's wonderful. I think that's good news, uh, particularly up to the uh, employer match. In fact, if somebody said, Asul, how should I start saving my money? What's the priority? I think priority number one is to have an emergency fund at least three months worth, worth of living expenses, hopefully more. That gives you staying power, that, that gives you time. If you were to lose your job, it gives you time to find the right job as opposed to just the first job. So I think that that's the first place. But the second place would be, I tell you, if your employer offers a 401k and if they offer a match, the second place would be to put your money in the 401k, at least up to the employer match. Uh, because that's a 100% return and that's basically free money. It's, it's hard to get that. Now, there's usually vesting uh, that's included with the employer match. Your money is your money. You can always get your money. If, if you leave that job, you can always, that money is yours. Your employer doesn't keep the money that you put into the account. But often there's three, four, or I've even seen five year vesting on 401k. So if you don't think you're gonna be there long, um, the value of that match is less, but really give it some thought because, you know, time has a way of creeping up on us. And sometimes we stay at a job uh, longer uh, than we think. So again, three fourths of us participate in a 401k. I'd, li I'd like to see that uh, be higher. In fact, studies have shown uh, if the employer sets you up for what's called auto, uh, auto enrollment, where you're basically um, set up to participate in the plan up to the employer's match, when they set that up, it tends to be closer to 90% of people uh, participate in, in the 401k. And that's, I'd really like to see, uh, for all of our sakes, uh, for 90% of people or 100% of people really participate at some level. Okay, um, here's some other interesting statistics. 80% of all the millionaires in America today are first generation millionaires. So it's not like they inherited the money. You know, they had to work for that money, just like you and I saving up. And, and, and the vast majority of those people are what's called saver investors, people that, you know, are fortunate that we have enough that we can save some money, but then we save and we invest. Um, so 80% of uh, millionaires are first generation. Uh, the vast majority of us are what, what's classified. There's really four categories uh, for millionaires. Uh, there's the virtuoso, which is somebody that has a highly specialized skill. Uh, somebody like a doctor, a lawyer, an attorney. Um, I'm sorry, a lawyer, attorney. Uh, somebody that has a high level of specialization. Maybe they're an auto mechanic that has a specialty that's hard to find anywhere else. They're highly skilled, they're highly educated, they're good at what they do. That's the virtuoso. Then there's the, uh, the entrepreneur, a uh, person that starts his own company and builds his own uh, net worth through building a, and creating a company. I mean, Jeff Bezos would be the classic example of that. Uh, Elon Musk would be another example, but then just everyday small business. Uh, so that tends to be the second category. And then the, the third category, and the third and fourth are, are where 70% of, of people self-identify. 
the third category is they climb their corporate ladder climbers. So they're working at a large company. They're good at what they've done. They've been promoted. They're later in their career now. They're making good money and they're saving that money. Uh, interestingly, over half the people that make over $100,000 a year, over half, say they don't save a penny. So that's not much money at all. I mean, that's, that's, that's enough money to save and that's not much money at all. In fact, it's zero uh, towards saving uh, towards their retirement. So um, uh, just because you're making a lot of money doesn't mean you're saving. So again, the two biggest categories of, of people that become millionaires are these corporate ladder climbers. And then the, the last category is saver investors. And that's like 60% of us, right? Um, we do a good job of saving. We live below our means. It doesn't feel sacrificial to us, but it's not enough to just save. You have to invest that money. So I just want to share that. Okay, let's keep going. We talked about uh, how much you can contribute. Um, your company, to the extent that your company uh, does large matches or profit sharing, in total, um, and this is frankly really confined to people that own their own companies, often like physician practices, but in total, all the money, your contributions in your employer can be up to $66,000 a year. And then again, you get the $7,500 a year catch up if you're over 50. Uh, most of us don't have access to that, but that's what the total contribution uh, limits are between you and your employer. Uh, again, for most of us, it looks closer to the 22,500 that we can put in and then plus the 7,500 uh, if you're over 50 catch up. Still $30,000 a year is a lot of money. Okay, let's keep going. I mentioned that three fourths of us participate in 401ks. Uh, the average contribution rate, this is actually encouraging. The average contribution rate is 13.5%. And that's the total between the employee and the employer. Um, so how much how much should we be saving? You know, I'd love to hear from you in the comments what you think uh, a savings rate should be, not just in your 401k, but in total. You know, uh, a rule of thumb in America, frankly, I don't know how we uh, got the rule of thumb, but I, I was certainly taught by my parents, you know, try to save 10% of what you make, try to save 10% of your, what you make. And I think that's a great place to start, but unfortunately, I think we need to even be saving more than that. Um, and I know it's aspirational, but I think we should be shooting for closer to 20%. Okay, let's keep going with these average 401k balances. I've, I've got a lot of information to share with you that I think you're gonna find super helpful. Okay, this is data according to Fidelity. Uh, and this is broken out by age group. So 20 year olds, the average uh, person between 20 and 30, the amount they have saved is $15,000. Uh, employee contribution is 7.5%. Uh, and Fidelity would say the goal there should be 1.2 times your annual salary uh, in, in your 401k. So that's in your 20s. And this is based on a Fidelity study, by the way. Okay, in your 30s, the average person has $50,000. And these are round numbers. It's actually $50.8,000. The, the average participant, uh, the average participant invests uh, 8.3, just over 8% of their money into their plan. Uh, and Fidelity would say uh, you should have one to three times your annual income in your 401k in your 30s. Uh, hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So remember, when you change jobs, you can actually roll your 401k into an IRA. There's some things you want to consider when doing that. Maybe give a quick call to a, uh, an accountant or fee-only financial advisor to, to know what those considerations are. But remember, when you quit your job, you can roll your money into an IRA. It tends to be lower costs, tend to be more investment options, but there are downsides as well. So be sure to talk to somebody that knows. Um, also loans, loans are uh, super popular, unfortunately with 401ks. Really try to avoid taking a loan out of your 401k. This is not financial advice for you specifically, but just in general. Um, this is just educational. This is something for you to think about, but definitely do your research before you take a loan out of your 401k. Almost one in five Americans take a loan out of their 401k. And it's hard to get, it's, it's hard to be disciplined and get that money back in your 401k. So just be careful. Uh, a Roth 401k. So uh, a regular 401k is like a regular IRA. You are putting money in pre-tax. Your contributions are pre-tax. 
Um, your earnings are, are growing tax free. But then when you retire and you take money out, every dollar you take out is going to be taxed as ordinary income. This isn't tax advice. I'm not an accountant. You know, find somebody uh, that, that is an accountant to give you the specifics on that. But this is in general. The nice thing about a Roth 401k is while you lose the, the tax um, uh, uh, pre-tax contribution, uh, while you lose that, uh, when you put money into a Roth 401k, it grows tax-free, and then you'll you'll never pay tax on that in the in the future, uh, according to current tax law. That could change in the future. So three fourths of uh, of companies now offer a Roth 401k. So it's definitely uh, worthwhile looking into that. Okay, so we talked about people in their 30s. People in their 30s have just over fifty thousand dollars in their 401k. Fidelity says they should shoot to have one to three times their salary uh, in there. Okay, and then um, as you approach your 40s, the average person in their 40s has uh, $120,000 in their 401k. Actual number is 120,800. Contribution rate is 8.9%, and that's actually the total between the employee and the uh, employer. So almost 9% of that person's uh, total wage. Uh, and Fidelity would say you should have five times your annual salary to be on track to retire, five times your annual salary. And I believe in Fidelity study, they're, they're saying if you assume that somebody wants to live on 60% of their pre-retirement income in retirement uh, to have these numbers. So in this case, in your 40s, to have five times uh, your annual salary in your 401k. If you want to live on 80%, you're going to need a third more, I would, I would think, based on those numbers, right? 80 is a third more than 60. Okay, and then in your, your 50s, um, this is where time's uh, uh, starting to get close. Uh, but the nice thing is your balance is growing, and the balance uh, and the returns on your account hopefully are, out, uh, are much larger than the contributions that you're putting in. So in your 50s, the average person has just over $200,000, I'm sorry, $205,000 in their 401k, 203.6. Um, average contribution total between employee and employer is 10.4%. And Fidelity would say the goal before you're 60 is to have eight times your monies, uh, eight times your salary in your 401k. And the goal by the time you're 65, Fidelity would say is 10x. Uh, and then I want to close with this. And before I get to uh, an important reminder on what to what I'm closing with, uh, if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the like button. As the kids say, thumbs for likes, subs for love. Leave me a comment. I do read the comments. Uh, and the last thing I want to leave you with is don't forget, if you do retire in your 60s um, or even, you know, 65 or earlier, you likely have close to a 30-year time horizon. So putting your money uh, totally in the bank probably doesn't make sense. This isn't financial advice for you, but you, you likely want to outpace inflation. This is educational for you. Do find a fee-only financial advisor that knows your situation that you can work with uh, for specifics, but don't get too conservative when you retire um, because you need your money to, to outpace inflation. You probably need to have some money in the stock market uh, of course, that's going to be volatile. That's going to go up and down. And that's going to cause some stress. So you don't want to have too much of your money in the stock market. You don't want to blow out at the wrong time. But I do think uh, the goal of outpacing inflation uh, is a good one to think about if it's right for you. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Again, if you did, give me a thumbs up. It does help the algorithm find other viewers. Uh, and leave me a comment. I do read the comments. Uh, I try to reply to as many of those as I can. And until next time, I'm Asul encouraging you to take full advantage of the youth of your senior years. Remember, we're only young once. Let's use our time wisely.